welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to discuss one of the A-level paper, which is 9702, February, March 2023. And the paper that I'm going to discuss is paper 52, question number one. One of the very, very uh, time consuming in answering this question over here and most of the students think that I couldn't get any idea how do I plan experiment so in this video I am going to give you some tips to get some ideas so that your ideas could small flow as smoothly as possible when you plan your own experiment so please stay tuned until the end of the video <laughs> So the question, an electric pump is placed in a container of liquid. A model wind turbine is connected to the pump by a cable as shown in figure 1.1. They are so very kind. They give you the whole diagram here so that you can imagine what kind of experiment that you want to plant. So the turbine is placed in moving air. As the turbine blades turn, electricity is generated and the pump pushes the liquid through a vertical pipe. Frequency of rotation of the turbine blade is F. So could you see this is a frequency and the height of the liquid is H. Mass per unit time, rate of mass is Q. And it is suggested that Q is related to F by the relationship QGH equals C plus DFQ, where G is the acceleration of the free fall and C and D are constant. So you have to plan a laboratory experiment to test the relationship between Q and F. This is super duper important. Q and F, draw a diagram. You, you are supposed to draw a diagram showing the arrangement of your equipment apparatus and you have to explain how the results your results could be used to determine the values for c and d at the end of the time you have to determine the values for your c and your d and in your plan they have already told you what they want so you have to include the procedure or the method to be followed all the measurements that you have taken and the measure uh, the control variables the one that you control it is a variable but you want to control it to be constant during the experiment and the analysis of the data what kind of data that you have taken and how do you analyze the data and any safety precautions to be taken so all these will give you a total of 15 months. I know it's not easy. You know, sometimes when you read the question and you see the question, it is so demotivating because you have to measure the frequency, measure the rate of uh, mass. So it's not easy when you have to think of what kind of apparatus that you are supposed to use. But worry not, I am going to give you some tips and my very own format to help you to ease and to decrease the time yeah, of your thinking in planning your experiment so that your experiment could be planned as smoothly as possible. This is the general format that everybody can follow because you know sometimes when you do not have a format, you could just write anything. So sometimes you have so many ideas in your mind and then when you write it, you might be missing some important idea. And then when you think of the idea, just come in and then you have to erase. You have you can't really erase because you are using your ball pen to write. You have to cancel here and then replace with another point and then you just cancel here and arrow here and arrow there. That will look very, very, very messy on your exam paper. And we do not want that to occur because, you know, sometimes the examiner might miss the point, the important point that you wrote. And we don't want that to occur, right? So I'm going to give you my formats and some tips to help you to plan the experiment more smoothly. So the first step, always starts with independent variable, dependent variables, and the dependent uh, and variables to be kept constant. And that will give you one mark. So when you see that there's a dotted line given here, so just ignore your diagram first, always start with this format. Write down your independent variable, dependent variable, and the variables to be kept constant. Put in such a way, this is a very neat way. It will help the examiner 
to see your answer straight away and they could go easy on you in giving you mocks, right? So if you do not know what to fill in for independent variable, the dependent variable and the variable to, variables to be kept constant, don't worry. Yeah, sometimes you don't know what to write, which is my independent variable, which is my dependent variable and the variables to be kept constant, right? So worry not. Just look at the equation suggested. It's very easy. So they will always suggest an equation for you. So all you need to do, back to the equation. This is the equation that is suggested that. So they suggested that Q is related to F. This is about Q and F, remember? So one will be your independent variable and the other one will be your dependent variable. So there is really no such a fixed answer that uh, maybe Q has to be independent variable and F has to be dependent variable or F has to be independent variable and Q has to be dependent variable. No such thing, no fixed answer for this. Everything, everybody will plan the experiment according to their way. Right, so every experiments, every experiment is different. So you could plan your own experiment. So my experiment here is that I prefer to put F as my independent variable. Another tip here I want to share is that when you go for your independent variable, make sure that you have an apparatus in your mind that which you could alter easily, you could change easily. That will be your independent variable. Because the dependent variable actually depending on independent variable. When you change that independent variable, the dependent variable will change too. So I go for F because it's easier for me to alter my F frequency. And when F is independent variable, dependent variable will be Q. So the variables to be kept constant, back to the equation again. So these are all the relationship. What do you want it to be constant? H. H should be constant in this relationship because you're investigating on Q and F, remember? So H has to be constant or maybe distance between the fan and the wind turbine is constant all the time. And you're using the same fan all the time throughout the whole experiment, no changing of fan, right? So step two, okay, go for labored diagram. That will give you one mark. So it's not just any diagram, you have to label everything. So I'm using the uh, diagram that figure 1.1 that they gave us here. So I know this is my fan. This is my fan with the four blades here. And my fan need a power supply to work on. So PSU means power supply unit, the DC power supply. And I connect it to a meter because I want to see the current that flows through the fan and the variable resistor as the safety precaution to control the amount of current that flows through the fan. And like what I say, not just any diagram, you have to label your diagram. So this is my fan, this is connecting wires, this is my emitter, this is a real start, and PSU means power supply unit or DC power supply. So after that, I make sure, because I want to make sure that the distance between the fan and the wind turbine is constant. So I place a meter rule just to make sure that the distance is always constant throughout the whole experiment. And, you know, sometimes when you're talking about the wind turbine, the fan that is moving, it could go wobbly sometimes and it could topple. So I need a G-clamp to clamp it firm to the bench so that it is not moving. And I can make sure that my distance between the wind turbine and the fan is always constant throughout the whole experiment. And to measure the H, make sure that the H is always constant, I need a meter rule. Could you see my meter rule over there? And But my meter rule cannot stand by itself, so I need to retort stand to clamp it. And when I clamp it, remember, we are investigating between F and Q. What is Q again? Rate of mass, mass of a liquid that flow. So to measure the mass of a liquid that flow, I need an electronic balance. The function of an electronic balance is to measure our mass. So this is my electronic balance, and I put a beaker there to fill in the liquid. Uh, so, but how can the liquid flow into the beaker if I don't have a flexible light tube to connect it to the beaker? 
from the pipe, I connected it to the beaker so that my liquid could be pumped out and flow smoothly through the light tube to the beaker. And I can measure the mass of the liquid after that. And step three, once you're done with your diagram, this is my whole diagram, labor diagram. So I can move on to method or procedure. So when I look at the diagram, it's very easy for me to plan my method or my procedure. Methods, first step, I start with the set up the apparatus as shown in the diagram. I want the examiner to look at my diagram. So I direct the examiner to my diagram. And I make sure that the distance between the fan and the turbine is set to be 25 cm, as close as possible, as long as they're not touching each other. And the power supply is turned to one volt. You might want to turn it to 1.5 volt, 2 volt. It is your choice. And uh, after that, I observe the flow of the water from pump to pipe. And when the water starts leaving the top of the pipe, I have a marker there before I connect the pipe to the flexible light tube. So I have to make sure that I look at the level of the water. So I have to record the rotation of the fan by using a video recorder. And I start my stopwatch immediately. So after three minutes, you can suggest any time that you like. Maybe after five minutes, four minutes, it's up to you your choice. After three minutes, I stop my stopwatch and the fan is switched off. I take the reading on the electronic balance. And Q, how to calculate Q? Remember, Q is the rate of mass. Q can be calculated by the mass of the liquid per the time taken. So the time taken, because I measure my time in minutes, so I want to change a second, I times 60 seconds. And the frequency can be calculated by the number of complete rotations or oscillations in three minutes. Remember, we record that and you could play back frame by frame over the time taken. And after that, this is my procedure. And after that, I analyze the data. So three marks will be given for analysis. Analysis is the easiest part to gain full marks. First, Graph, what kind of graph that you want to plot it? What kind of graph that you want to plot? So based on the relationship, I want to plot the graph of Q against F cube is plotted. And it is mo most of the time, is this a straight line graph? And if your straight line graph is obtained, but I cannot start my graph from origin because that is Y in the set. So I just say that if a straight line graph is obtained, the relationship is valid. And remember, the question asks us to use our results to determine the values for C and D. So C can be calculated from, you have to modify the equation. So C can be calculated from Y intercept times GH, whereas D can be calculated by group gradient times GH. Step five, which is the hardest part of all, and they give you six months for that. So I'm going to write down my safety precaution as well as additional details. This is not just details that you think that it's a detail. For example, if you think that, oh, the experiment should be repeated with um, uh, repeated three times and then you find the average, that is not being called additional details because every experimenter knows that they should have repeat the experiment and find the average so that the results are more reliable. So that is that cannot be considered as additional details. So look at my answer here, my safety precaution and additional details. The first one is set square. It's being used to make sure meter rule is vertical. Everybody knows the function of the set square, but no, not, not many experimental will take note of this. They just claim the meter rule and they just see the height, that's it. That's it. So you have, when you put a set square there, you can make sure that the meter row is really, really 90 degrees to the surface of the bench and you can measure the height as accurately as possible. Second safety precaution or additional detail is you tell us how we calculate the mass of the water. Q is related to mass of the water. You can calculate the mass of the water by the mass of the water plus the bigger minus mass of the empty bigger, remember? And the third safety precaution or additional detail will be one of the blades of the fan. I mark it with a marker. 
so that it's easier for me to count the number of rotation when I play back on my video recorder. Number four, experiment is repeated with the voltage of power supply being switched on to maybe 1.5 volt, 2 volt, 2.5 volt, 3 volt. You just give your suggestion to what kind of voltage that you want to use. And number five, experiment is started after the flow of the air is steady. You shouldn't just start the fan and start the experiment. You have to make sure that maybe after 10 seconds or 20 seconds, then only you start your experiment so that the results are more reliable. And number six, because six months, so I put in six points, the angles of the blades of the fan is make sure to be parallel or almost the same angles as the blades of the wind turbine so that everything could go smoothly, so the air would flow smoothly to the wind turbine. And you get a, a more significant result. And that's all for question number one. I hope the tips help you in your experiment planning. If you think if you think that the tips are very useful, please do support me by subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I thank you very much for that and see you in my next video. Bye.